A volcano is event in the crust of Earth or another planet or satellite, from which issue eruptions of molten rock, hot rock fragments, and hot gases. A volcanic eruption is an awesome display of Earth's power. Yet, while eruptions are spectacular to watch, they can cause disastrous loss of life and property, especially in densely populated regions of the world. So in this video, we are going to talk about the, the largest volcano of all time just cracked open the Earth. The video is going to be amazing, so make sure you stick to the end. Sometimes beginning with an accumulation of gas-rich magma, molten underground rock, in reservoirs near the Earth's surface, it can be preceded by emissions of steam and gas from small vents in the ground. There are volcanoes on every continent, even Antarctica. Some 1,500 volcanoes are still considered potentially active around the world today. 161 of those, over 10%, sit within the boundaries of the United States. The majority of volcanoes in the world form along the boundaries of Earth's tectonic plates, massive expanses of our planet's lithosphere that continually shift, bumping into one another. When tectonic plates collide, one often plunges deep below the other in what's known as a subduction zone. As the descending landmass sinks deep into the Earth, temperatures and pressures climb, releasing water from the rocks. The water slightly reduces the melting point of the overlying rock, forming magma that can work its way to the surface, the spark of life to reawaken a slumbering volcano. Some of the Earth's grandest mountains are composite volcanoes, sometimes called stratovolcanoes. They are usually tall with steep even sides and are made out of repeating layers of lava flows, volcanic ash, cinders, blocks, and volcanic bombs. Some composite volcanoes rise over 8,000 feet above their surroundings, but they reach much higher elevations when compared to the level of the sea, called above sea level. Ojos del Salado in Chile is the tallest composite volcano on Earth with a summit elevation, height above sea level, of 22,615 feet, the tallest in the U.S. is Mount Rainier in Washington State with a summit elevation of 14,410 feet. Some of the most famous and beautiful mountains in the world are composite volcanoes including Mount Fuji in Japan, Mount Cotopaxi in Ecuador, Mount Shasta in California, Mount Hood in Oregon, and Mount Street Helens in Washington. Shield volcanoes are built almost entirely of fluid lava flows. Lava pours out of vents in all directions, either from the summit, top, or along two to three rift zones, fractures, that radiate out from the summit like spokes on a bicycle wheel. Before we move on, support us by hitting subscribe and the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos. Now let's get back to our topic. According to an investigation by volcanologist Eric Clemetti for Wired, the origins of the term supervolcano are far from scientific. It was used as far back as 1925 in the travelogue Conquering the World by Helen Bridgman. Since then, the term has taken a winding path to popularity. Clemetti, who now writes for Discover, notes that the initial geologic use of the term in the mid-1900s differs from its modern definition of a mega-eruption. The Yellowstone caldera, sometimes referred to as the Yellowstone Supervolcano, is a volcanic caldera and supervolcano in Yellowstone National Park in the western United States. The caldera and most of the park are located in the northwest corner of Wyoming. The caldera measures 43 by 28 miles, 70 by 45 kilometers, and post-caldera lavas spill out a significant distance beyond the caldera proper. It has had three massive eruptions, all of which created calderas. The first eruption occurred some 2.1 million years ago, and the second took place about 800,000 years later. Yellowstone Caldera, the youngest of the three calderas, is the largest. Its notable features include Yellowstone Lake, the northern portion of which is located in the caldera's southeastern area. The West Thumb, which was formed by a relatively small eruption in the caldera about 150,000 years ago, is a knob-like protrusion on the lake's western side. Two resurgent magma domes, one just north of and the other just west of Yellowstone Lake, have been forming in the caldera and the western dome underlies many of the park's best-known hydrothermal features. The magma lurking in Yellowstone's shallow reserve is between just 5 and 15 percent molten. An eruption usually requires at least 50 percent to gel in this gooey hot state. More likely than such an explosion is a lava flow, a spurt of slowly oozing molten rock. Although a lava flow can pose hazards for communities that lie in its path or spectators attempting to approach close enough to roast a marshmallow, those dangers are much easier to predict and avoid. As magma feeds into a magma chamber or reservoir situated about 6 to 10 kilometers, 4 to 6 miles, beneath the park, the ground swells. When the magma begins to solidify and cool, the ground falls. Volcanologists who have been measuring this activity since 1923 say the ground rose about 25 centimeters, 9.8 inches, between 2004 and 2009. However, in 2010, the land began to subside. 
The period of slow, steady rise has many scientists wondering whether Yellowstone might erupt in the near future. And if it does, there is concern about how intense that eruption may be. The big question is if Yellowstone started shaking tomorrow, what is there to expect, says Dr. Steve Anderson, a volcanologist and earth sciences professor at the University of Northern Colorado. I don't think we know exactly what to expect. In fact, Dr. Jacob Lowenstern, research geologist and scientist in charge at the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, says that Yellowstone is currently a dormant volcano with low levels of unrest. There is no current activity that is going on that would indicate anything is happening. If there was something coming, there is nothing to show at this point in time, he says. There are many supervolcanoes around the world other than Yellowstone, including California's Long Valley, Japan's Era Caldera, Indonesia's Toba, and New Zealand's Topo. This latter supervolcano is the last to have ever released a super eruption, which burst free some 26,500 years ago. Several volcanoes are commonly called supervolcanoes, but their eruptions haven't quite earned them this super status. Take Krakatau's 1883 eruption, for example. The explosions were so loud they could be heard nearly 3,000 miles away on Rodriguez Island, and they triggered towering tsunami waves that killed more than 36,000 people. Still, even that beast rated at VEI 6. About 1.3 million years ago, the Mesa Falls eruption ejected 280 cubic kilometers, 67 cubic miles, of material and created the Henry's Fort Caldera, located in Idaho, west of Yellowstone. Earthquakes can be overdue because the stress on fault lines is built up consistently over long periods, which means quakes can be predicted with a relative degree of accuracy. But this is not how volcanoes behave. They do not accumulate magma at constant rates, and the subterranean pressure that causes the magma to erupt does not follow a schedule. Scientists are not convinced that there ever will be another big eruption at Yellowstone. Smaller eruptions, however, are much likelier. Since the Lava Creek eruption, there have been about 30 smaller outbreaks at Yellowstone the last lava flow being about 70,000 years ago. Others like Tobabut in Sumatra, Indonesia, can form along subduction zones where one tectonic plate plunges beneath another. While the super eruption would no doubt be devastating, it wouldn't be a world-ending affair. For an idea of the effects of such an eruption, we could look to the 1815 explosion of Mount Tambora in Indonesia. At a VEI of 7, this explosion was not quite a super eruption. But it gives a sense of the many dangers of such mega blasts. The explosion sent a superheated plume of hot ash and gas 28 miles into the air upon its collapse, producing searing avalanches known as pyroclastic flows. Such immediate hazards killed around 10,000 people, but that wasn't the only concern. The gases and ash injected into the atmosphere darkened the skies, blotted out the sun, and altered the climate, resulting in what became known as the year without summer. Extensive crop failures, starvation, and disease followed, which killed around 82,000 more people. What's most important to keep in mind about modern eruptions is that agencies around the world are keeping a close watch on supervolcanoes like Yellowstone, monitoring their every tremor and magma-laden belch. Volcanoes provide some notice of pending eruption and modern equipment helps scientists take their pulse with more accuracy than ever before. So that's it. Please like, share, and comment your thoughts below if you like this video. Remember to subscribe to see our next video. Stay safe, and we will be back soon with another video.